Kyrie Irving joined First Take on Monday morning to sit down with Stephen A. Smith, and I believe Max Kellerman was being beamed in via Skype from somewhere else. Molly Kieran there as well. And Molly Kieran there as well, thank you. Uh, to discuss some of the unfinished business between him and LeBron James. And the interview got very, very interesting with mm -hmm. this possible degree of, depending how you look at it, pettiness or shade. Roll clip. Did you speak to LeBron James or talk to LeBron James before you, before you and your representatives met with ownership and let them know that you wanted out? No. Why not? Why would I have to? If you don't speak to somebody about it, they might take it personally. Yeah. Ky First of all, I need to mention three things in this clip. First, ESPN really targeting their audience. First take presented by AARP. <laughs> That's unbelievable target marketing to show you how old people are that watch. Uh, uh, oh my ESPN. god, I didn't even realize that. Number two, <laughs> I still think to this day, Max Kellerman is being held hostage by first take. I agree with that. Because the guy has always been, always been too clear cut to be on first take. He's not a hot take guy. Correct. And three. No, well, I mean, he uses. Facts. Yes, that's a good point. I like, I like facts. Uh, third point, the most important to the context of the clip, I think Kyrie Irving is sick of hearing LeBron James brought up. I, I think this is so similar to the Neymar situation where Kyrie and Neymar, I do think, carry an ego. I don't think that's a bad thing in all cases. Kobe carried a massive ego. Didn't necessarily hurt and his chance winning with the Lakers let, in 2019. Let me interject. The reason that you said about Michael Jordan, about Kobe Bryant, is that not only were they egotistical, but it goes hand in hand with us viewing them and creating this image in our mind of them being greats and winners, and we overlook the ego. So, they go hand in hand. To your point about Kyrie, yeah, there's a little bit of ego, but here's the thing. As long as, and maybe we're just anointing LeBron, the literal king, and that he deserves to know everything at all. He's like a Pep Guardiola control freak is how we're viewing him. Fair. Should Kyrie, aside from telling David Griffin when he was there as general manager, and telling, uh, what's the asshole owner's name of the cab? Gilbert. Dan, Dan Gilbert, Gilbert. Thank you. Should he have told LeBron James that he wanted out? That's the main question that we have. Like, we could have all of our viewpoints of he should not leave Cleveland. He's in a great situation. No, it's not been my point. Okay, I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, sorry. I'm saying, not, uh, you... not us. I'm saying the viewpoint from many NBA fans is why fix something that isn't broken? You're, you have a bridge to the finals every single year as long as you play with LeBron in the East, especially as opposed to the West. Why screw up something that is what seems to be so perfect. We don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Nonetheless, should Kyrie essentially have told LeBron because that was the opening question that Stephen A. had? To answer your question, should Kyrie have told him? No, because the same favor or same outcome, outcome should be asked of Kyrie to LeBron. How do we not know that Kyrie ah. was told at any point by LeBron, hey, I'm not entirely sold about staying here. How do we not know that? Because, look. Devil's advocate. Yeah. Veteran. Allowed to do what he wants. Of course. Absolutely. 25-year-old. Still somewhat of a youngin'. Of course. Not as a company. Still definitely a youngin'. Still instrumental. Still, I don't know, of course. Still instrumental to the Cavaliers and needed by LeBron James. And LeBron needed him. He needed LeBron. Mm -hmm. No doubt about that. Kevin Love was important, too. All of these guys. At some point or another into winning Cleveland's championship. Draymond Green getting suspended. Important to the Cleveland Cavaliers winning championships. However, if Kyrie truly felt and Kyrie's agent truly feels that LeBron is leaving in 2018, there is absolutely no reason right. for Kyrie to mortgage his future in winning championships and being in the best case scenario to win to stay for one more year of potentially winning next year with LeBron because I do think, as long as LeBron's in the equation, 
it's tough to put him anywhere outside the finals. I think, yeah, go ahead. In the case of Kyrie Irving here, he goes to the Celtics. Kyrie Irving and the Celtics, barring, of course, health like any other team. Next mm -hmm. year, no, the Warriors have probably already won the finals. Let's not count out the chance of a bruiser series against the Spurs or the Rockets. Sure. Maybe even, maybe I don't even. know about bruiser against the Rockets. Bruiser against the Spurs, though. I mean, yes. like, it could be yes. a physically I, I don't bruising, think the Rockets. taxing, I think they win in five. mental. Uh, uh, if all healthy, of course, with Kawhi Leonard there, I think it would be phenomenal. Yep. Now, yep. What about three, four years from now? Kyrie's stuck with... So he's 28 years old. He's 28 years old. Maybe Kyrie's, if he stayed with the Cavaliers. But he wouldn't stay. They don't, I know. Let's, let's just back up for a Where's second. his contract up? He, so he has two more years under his current contract right now. So all he would have to... Um, all. He would have to stay with, for, uh, with Cleveland for one more year if LeBron were to leave after this year. So he'd stick it out for one more year or force his way into just a trade. Stay for one more year. Yep with Cleveland yep. or be in the exact same position with yep. a better chance to win in the year after LeBron's gone because obviously if LeBron leaves the Cavaliers, if he leaves the Cavaliers, which I think is part of the reason Kyrie wanted to leave. But here's the thing. Doesn't it say something that Kyrie is leaving because he believes that LeBron might stay? And he doesn't want to be with LeBron. No, anymore. I don't. I don't think. I don't. I mean, maybe. Well, again, we're dipping into the unknown, so we're just it's creating all speculation. pieces so, to left and right. Hmm. Let's uh, see. If let's so let's, yeah, let's play like, it out that LeBron stays. Okay. Um, the roster right, needs a stays. the roster needs a still a complete rehaul. Well, actually, with the trade, um, okay. Let's play it this way. LeBron stays and Kyrie does, doesn't doesn't get traded. Developing so many layers. Okay. Here's this. LeBron stays and Kyrie never gets traded. You have an average age of a roster that seems like it's 38 and a half years old. Completely. Tristan Thompson. Uh, not Tristan. Tristan Thompson is Rich your first name. Richard Jefferson. <laughs> They're both, you know, sh bald guys. <laughs> right, Richard right, right. Jefferson, so, so. and they both kind of disappeared during the final. <laughs> Richard Jefferson. Yeah. But I get, I get your point. J.R. Smith. I get your point. Kyle Korver. These are uh, Jose Calderon. These are old, old guys, man. So I don't blame Kyrie Irving for doing what he decided to do. And I don't do you think he should have handled this first take thing better? Yeah, man. It doesn't come off well. Um, Just to give, like, that shit he's, grin. He's coming off. Again, I like Kyrie Irving, so I will excuse a lot of what he does. Uh, same re I like Draymond Green, so I don't really call Draymond Green dirty, but he probably is dirty because okay. he kicks people in the nuts, yes. and that's nothing. But I like I, – do I like that he kicks people in the nuts? No. Do I like that he's way more physical than, like, 99% of the league? Of yes. course. I like that about him. If you don't like Kyrie Irving, uh -huh. you're going to view this. The optics of this situation, ESPN's new favorite word, uh, is smug – egotistical traitor Kyrie Irving leaving his best chance at ever winning again to go to the Celtics. Now, if you like Kyrie Irving it's and you don't like LeBron James, it's LeBron deserves this. He's a control freak, as you're mentioning. Mm -hmm. He can't have everything his way. He ruins coaches. He ruins managements. He ruins teams. Like, there's those are the two ways he's you can view it. he's still one of the greatest players. And he's still of one of the time. greatest. Like, one of the things that I wrote about once for actually the TYT Medium page, I don't think I ever put it up on Huffington Post, but it was if Michael Jordan played in this era, he would be the most hated NBA player possibly of all time. He would, because he would also people. score 60 points. Oh, he game. would. He would. He'd be one of the most hated because he, if he knocked somebody out in practice, are you kidding? Social media, they get a hold of that, done. Would have buried part of his career. Punch Steve Kerr in the he face. He quit. That's what he, he quit the sport. Like, you imagine if LeBron took two years off to go play football. He didn't quit this sport. Well, do you think the gambling story? Yes. I 100% agree with you. <laughs> I do think David Stern went, we can't lose didn't you. He quit. Yeah, you got to settle they your were shite. Like, Mike, Mike. You got to take Mike, a year Mike. off. This has been a great run. Yeah. <laughs> what we're going to do is save our image and save your image. I. Go play baseball. <laughs> Go be really bad. You know what the funny thing And is? then come back wearing a different jersey, they, so it seems like you had a renaissance. They told him baseball for a couple of reasons. One, like, way less injury risk than other, than, like, football. Oh, well, he wasn't going to play football. I know, but, like, if he did, do we not count out the fact that Michael Jordan has some of the most unbelievable, like, mid-air grabbing one-handed save the ball from going out of bounds? Michael Jordan would palm a basketball mid-air. If he played receiver... He would have dominated football. This is actually a good. Just as a pure athlete. Save it. This is a good what if for if Michael Jordan. Played. I'm telling you, he'd put up. He'd he in 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 the 90s. It wasn't an airborne game yet, so possession right. receivers like Jerry Rice were absolute. I mean, but then Randy Moss was about to emerge onto the league. Right. Michael Jordan was fast. 
he obviously can get up higher and stay mm -hmm. up higher than a lot of other players. He's six six. Six six. <laughs> Are you kidding? Give, six, six. give that man fucking Dante. Okay, okay, all right. Let's. <laughs> he scores Give, just, just say it. I can't. I, I I'm losing my game. mind. Uh, he never would have played basketball again. All right. He would have won seven Super Bowls. He would not have won seven Super Bowls. One Super Bowl. No. Nope. One playoff game. No. Nope. More. He would have played for the Bears. Oh, he would have played for the Bears. Who would have been his quarterback in the 90s? Still Jay Cutler. <laughs> Dude. He could have decided. Not him. He could have, he could have been a part of some of the teams. That started five, six quarterbacks a year. Like Eric Kramer could have been he one He would have been like the Antonio Brown of his generation. Who would be his quarterback? Who cares? And his quarterback. Was there greasy around? Blowed. Was there Blue. a greasy around? Greasy was a thousand. Regardless, come back another time to Maybe watch me Shane lose Matthews. my mind in proving that Michael Jordan could have been a top five wide receiver in the NFL during his time. Somehow getting off base from Kyrie Irving. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and subscribe to TYT Sports.